Hi friends, this is Chris with Josephine's Design. I'm back with War Room, Session 4, Day 3. We are going to finish Session 4 today. Yay! And Session 5 is so good, guys. I spent, um, my husband and I ran errands today. It's still Saturday. This will go up Sunday. And um, I was literally going through, again, Session 5, and it was like, it's great when you have a bad memory because it's like, you know, it's like if you've seen that movie and you watch it again, you kind of maybe think you saw it, but you're not sure. It's like a whole new movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> Talk about God's God's word being living, the living word. Um, because when I went through it the last time, it's different than it is this time. So, and this is my, I don't know how many times I've gone through this, but anyways, it's an excellent study. Let's pray. I'll quit talking. Let's get going. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so, so much for today. Lord, we give this time to you. We give this um, this opportunity to you, and we just thank you so, so much. Lord, help my words be only your words. Help us hear what you have us to hear and see what you have us to see and learn it, and then give it away. Give it to the next person to encourage. Jesus, we love you, love you, love you. Thank you so, 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 so much. Love you, God. Amen. All right, guys. So, all righty. I am, we just finished um, the other. Did it come, baby? Oh, you can put it underneath the table in the kitchen if you want. Okay. Yeah, I got the thumbs up. She's so sweet. <laughs> okay. So now, let's see here. My joy doesn't come from my friends. It doesn't even come from my job. It doesn't even come from my husband. That's a lot to think about. My joy is found in Jesus. Um, why don't you put that in the bedroom, sweetie? Might be easier unless there's room under the table. I'll start over. Sorry, guys. My joy doesn't come from my friends. It doesn't even come from my job. It doesn't even come from my husband. My joy is found in who? Jesus. And just in case you forgot, he has already defeated you. When was, when was Elizabeth saying that in the movie? Leave a comment below, please. Let's start talking. Okay. Um, it's been taught that happiness, so there's a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is delight based on circumstances, while joy is delight regardless of circumstances. Yes. Yes. And I've always shared the acronym J-O-Y, Jesus, Others, You. And that's true joy when you have that in the right order. Um, and I can be a person that can give everything away and not take care of myself. So I have to be careful with that. That's not joy. That's almost like self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, makes you feel better. You got to do it because God calls you to do it. Okay. But finding joy in difficult circumstances is really hard. It is really hard. And, you know, just like I was saying um, in yesterday's lesson, there are things that Satan means for bad and God can use for good. So what are you doing with it? Okay, I'm going to keep going here. It's um, so take a moment to describe when you experience joy during difficulty. One of the most difficult things I've ever had to do was. Um, tell my mother that my father had passed away. My mom was very sick with Alzheimer's and I was very thankful that God had pricked my heart to call her and ask her to tell him good night. It was time for him to go to sleep. And I'm um, sorry, my tummy's making noise. And, um, I mean, why God had me do that? I don't know. But my mom was in the end stages of Alzheimer's. So, but for some reason, um, if I asked her to do something, she would do it. And she was like, oh, honey, yes, of course, of course. And her voice had changed with Alzheimer's. The sound, of course, the things she spoke about, et cetera. Um, she'd become less confident, you know, as time went on. Um, but she got on, I put on speaker and my dad was, Awake, but it's, you know, he was awake, but he was intubated. And, um, it was the sweetest thing because she said goodbye to him and she did it in a voice like I had grown up with. 
She was perfect. The tone was perfect. She was clear as a bell. And she went one step further and she went on to not just say good night, honey, but it's time for you to rest now and we'll be just fine. You need to get, you need to go to sleep now. And, um, and we're going to be just fine. And I remember thinking, oh Lord, she couldn't have said it any better if I'd written her a script, you know? And I remember telling her when my dad died and she looked at me and I said, you know, mom, daddy was in so much pain. He was so sick and he just kept trying to stay alive to make sure we were all taken care of. But he was just worn out mom. And he went on to be with Jesus last night because, you know, we got home at like two in the morning and I wasn't going to wake her up to tell her this. And we all wanted to be there together. All the siblings and grandchildren, et cetera, who, whoever was available. And of course, all the siblings and spouses were there. And I will never forget telling her that my daddy had died. And she had tears streaming down her cheeks with a huge smile and said, that's good, honey. That's okay. You know, something to that effect. That is joy. That is joy that she was not selfish. She was not thinking of herself. How am I going to do? What am I, how am I going to pay the bills? Who, who's going to take care of me? She was genuinely sad that he had died, but happy that he was in heaven with God and made whole. And that's what I reminded her of. And um, it was the sweetest conversation. And that is joy in a difficult journey, you know? All right. Now consider the, sor the source of joy. And the easy church answer is Jesus. <laughs> I love that they're so blunt. But for this exercise, we want you to share in a space provided what specifically about Jesus brings you joy. Um, I'd like to ask you below, what specifically about Jesus brings you joy? So here it says, read the following principles regarding joy in the scripture verses that accompany it. So in Psalms 71, 23, it goes like this. Oops. Did I do that wrong? I did. One more page. <laughs> okay. I will shout for joy and sing your praises for you have ransomed me. He paid the price. He paid the ransom. Psalms 21, 6. And this says joy is present in my life when I'm praising God. Amen. Are you praising God? Are you taking time to do that? I know. Sometimes we hit the floor running and we get through the day and go, Lord, I didn't even say hello. Would you do that to your children? Would you do that to your husband? Would you do that to your neighbor? <laughs> you know, all right. So I know I'm, and all of this is pointing back at me. Okay, guys, it's not just you. Okay. Um, Psalms 21, six reads like this. You have endowed him with eternal blessings, blessings and given him the joy of your presence. Um, I have joy when I'm in God's presence. Do you know what it is to be in God's presence? Have you experienced that? Do you love him to get to that point in your prayer and worship time that you know that you know he is there with you? He's there with us always, but that we are in his presence, that we are fully aware. It's it's one thing to sit in a room with a bunch of people and have a conversation, a big giant conversation, or to even like watch a movie. But it's another thing to sit next to someone and be in their presence and talk about the movie, right? One-on-one. -on -one. Where are you? Are you in the big auditorium listening and watching the movie? Or are you sitting beside, beside with the father, sitting down with him and discussing the movie or the things in your life? Just saying, okay. Um, he, he, he wants the latter. <laughs> I'm going to cut to the chase because, you know, he wants the latter. Okay, so now we're in James 1, 2 through 3, which you know how dear the book of James is to me. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great what? Joy! For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Guys, that's so good. Please read James. Please read James. It is so good when you're going through difficult times. Um, I have to read it again because, you know, just have to. 
Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Praise him. Praise him. That's me saying on the side, just praise him. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance is a chance to what? Grow. If you run and you run and you run and you run, and it's just difficult, 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 or do you look at it as, I made it five more steps today. I made it, you know, 50 more yards today. I made it, what is it? So the goal is, like any muscle that we use, the more we use it, the easier it is to use, and the further that we can go with it. That's such an excellent picture of what it is in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. You know how much I love James. I'll have to stop. I may have joy in trials because God gives me what? Endurance. Yes, he does. Um, Psalms 119.11. So here we go. Okay, 119.11 goes like this. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. That is so important. You must know God's word. Okay, and that joy comes from knowing the word of who? God. We want God to give us the answers. We got to know his word because most of the time it's here, right? Okay, um, but we do need to sit with him in fellowship and discuss these things. Definitely, we need to be in his presence. Now we're going to go to 1 Peter 1 8. So here we go. I'm sorry, my husband's coming in the back door, so we'll see what he's doing. Um, 1 Peter 1 8, and it goes like this You loved him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. And this is joy is found through faith in who? In Jesus Christ. Philemon 1 7. Okay, guys, I have to come clean. Yes, my head is completely foggy. When I was marking my verses this afternoon, I was trying to sing the books of the Bible song and I just couldn't get Philemon. So I'm totally humbled from the last time I told you guys. And the back of this Bible is a quick reference of the books of the Bible. If you don't know where you're going, just peek at it and look. It's okay. God can use it in your life. Okay. All righty. Hold on one second. Hi, honey. You coming in? Okay. I'll be finishing up, baby doll. Okay, so Philemon 1.8 reads like this. We'll take care of it. Don't worry about it, baby. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I pulled it in the wrong place. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Wait. I'm on Peter. No, we just did Peter. Sorry, guys. Seriously, foggy head. What can I say? Um... Your love has given me much joy and comfort, my brother, for your kindness has often refreshed the hearts of God's people. Are you kind? Are you kind to those that are around you? Um, I can be grumpy. I can be. And I can be whiny and the whole thing. And, you know, I had somebody, something happened this week and I had to be very firm and had to set some hard boundaries and give some tough love away. And a person recently told me, you were angry for two days. I said, absolutely not. And they were like, well, yes, you were. And I said, no, it wasn't. I did not say a word for 24 hours. And yes, I was very firm and emphatic because we've had this conversation many, many times. And it was time for you to know where I stand on this. And where the God stands on this, where the scripture stands on this. But, so, when we think about this, joy comes from encouragement and fellowship with other believers. Sometimes that encouragement is tough love. Sometimes it is total kindness and um, all of that. I mean, we always go the kind route. We always go the empathetic route. We always go the sympathetic route. But when something is not, it's just over and over and over. And it's something that is severe. Sometimes we have to stand firm, okay? But we better make sure we're to be slow to speak, slow to anger, quick to listen, right? Okay, scripture tells us. Okay, hold on one second. Peanut butter, can you come help daddy? 
Okay, so now we are in Galatians 5.22. And it reads like this. You probably have this memorized. But, okay. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Okay. And wipe everything down, baby. Thank you. Joy comes through the working of the Holy Spirit. Let's read that again. If you don't have this memorized, memorize it, okay? Um, since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part. Whoops, hold on. I did that wrong. 522, my apologies. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So even though this person wanted to say, but you did this, the answer was no. I purposely went to God, asked him for his guidance. And I knew that if it, you know, the old adage, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Yeah. And that's what I knew I had to do. I knew it. But um, yeah. And it, I believe that what took place, I believe that God guided in it. Now, you know, days later, this person is still trying to justify <laughs> and it's okay. But I am here to say that there are times where we must get firm. We must stand firm. We must love enough to, to be honest, right? Tough love. Um, but we better make sure before we pull the little splinter out of somebody's eye that we don't have a big old plank in ours, right? Okay. Okay. All right. Philippians 4, 4 through 9. I kind of want to back up a little bit. Paul sat in prison as he wrote Philippians, perhaps the most joyful letter he mentions day. Sarah socks too. Thank you. He mentions, um, sorry, perhaps the most joyful letter. He mentions joy and rejoicing many times in Philippians 4, 4. He tells the Philippians to what? Rejoice always. Sorry, guys. Um, my husband comes in. It's, it's a production. Okay. <laughs> what does it look like to rejoice always? Okay, so let's read Philippians. Oh, goodness. Sorry, guys. My hands are... My dear sweet granddaughter, she's so sweet. I had cut my thumb the other day fixing up her beauty parlor bag that I made from the Dollar Tree. And all day she would grab my hand and say, Oh, Mimi Chris, owie. And then she would come back and she would come back later and go, oh, let me see your owie. Let me see your owie. And she was just so gentle and sweet and kind. And it was so sweet. Are we living that out in our lives? Okay. Or are we rough and gruff and uh, quick to anger and quick to be, you know, I know I have, I'm saying all this to me. Okay, guys, I'm saying it all back to me. Okay. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice, not rejoice, rejoice, exclamation point. Let everyone see that you're considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. The Lord is coming soon. Um, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. When you will experience God's peace, uh, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Do you believe that? My word this year is peace. Because I clearly need to work on that. <laughs> what does it look like to rejoice always? When times are good, it's easy to rejoice. When times are difficult, not so easy. Not so easy. Sometimes when I am so broken and so heartache, uh, heartbroken and so sad or so angry or whatever it is, sometimes I just learn to sing. Rejoice in the Lord always. Sorry, my voice is so sore. A throat. And again, I say rejoice. Find that song. If you don't know it, learn it and sing it in the worst of times. Yes, it's got to be tied to that scripture. Anyways, okay. What does Paul suggest we do in order to have the peace of God? Peace of God. Peace of God, my friends. 
So leave that in the comment below, please. Please, 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 let's get to talking. What does Paul suggest we do in order to have the peace of God? Paul wrote, the, um, wrote to the Philippians that they should stop worrying and to go to God with a request. He follows saying they were to dwell, reckon, measure, or deliberate on things that are lovely, pure, and true. There is no one more true, lovely, excellent, and praiseworthy than who? God himself. There is nothing that can give us peace and joy like prayer, fixing our eyes on Jesus and scripture. Prayer, look into Jesus and scripture. Prayer, look into Jesus and scripture. Get that, get that. I, I need to have it like, you know, <laughs> on a piece of paper that I stick on my hand every morning and I look at it, okay? Because life gets busy. It gets busy. Um... I'm going to read this because I love C.S. Lewis. In, in his reality-based fiction work, Screw Tape Letters, C.S. Lewis explores the attacks of the enemy against the children of God. He writes, in the voice of a demon, it is funny how mortals always picture us as putting things into their minds. In reality, our best work is done by keeping things out. What are the demons saying? Keeping things out, keeping God's word out, keeping um, us from praying keeping us from um, focusing on God, reading the scripture. Okay. I mean, C.S. Lewis is an excellent author. If you haven't read much of his stuff, I mean, you kind of have to, we just watched um, last night, um, Prince Caspian. We haven't watched him in a long time. Um, my wedding gift to my husband was um, the Chronicles of Narnia, you know, hardbound with his name put on him. And he wore those babies out reading to our kids, you know. And um, yes, it's a higher level of thinking, but it is, it is, it really makes you have to stop and think about scripture and what our role is and what we're to do and what we're not to do and things like that. Because there's a lot of um, man's mistakes, God's plan, and and all of that. So C.S. Lewis is a very interesting author. So I'm just gonna throw that out there. Um, but it's not a self help, and it's not a one two three. Okay, let me just say that. Um, one of the strategies the enemy employs is to turn your thoughts away from God, away from joy. Perhaps he doesn't do that best by entering your mind, but by preventing you from dwelling on that, which would probably, uh, on that, which would undoubtedly turn you towards God. As you, okay, as we close today, um, we ask God to turn our minds toward the things listed in Philippians 4, 8, ask him to help you dwell on him and his word. Okay, turn anything you have recently been worried about into a prayer request. Cast your cares upon him. Um, it says, cast your cares upon the Lord and then thank God for the joy found in him. Casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Um, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so, so much for letting me be able to talk through this. What a blessing. I have been coughing and sneezing and um unable to talk for any length of time at all today. And I, my throat is almost without pain. Um, I don't know how that is, but I do know that you are God and I have to know that you are totally in control. Um, I thank you. And I thank you even for the time when my husband comes in and my daughter's availability. God, you're amazing. You know how hard it was to get to this today. Lord, we give this time to you. We ask that we can focus on you, your word, um, we can memorize your word in our heart. We can write it. We can apply it. We can seek it out. We can just dig deep. Help us to serve you well, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. We bow down before you. And we praise you in the great things that you do in our lives, the everyday things you do in our lives, and in the really yucky days that we go through. We know that you are there and you are in charge. You are in charge. We give you charge of our lives. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Okay, guys, please get talking. And if you haven't been chatty yet, and even if it's like six months later you're going through this, still leave questions because people watch these years later. I'm always amazed at messages I get from people. So um, when you leave a comment, it encourages each other, okay? That's all it's about. Think about how you can serve in your comments, how you can honor God and serve and encourage those. It's a great opportunity. Okay, guys, I'm going to let you go. I feel like my throat is just about done. And um, thank you for being here today. That you made it this long is such a blessing. I love you guys. 
Session five is fantastic. I am so excited. Um, it is one of my favorite um, writings of Paul. It is something that has meant so much to me in my life. So I'm super excited. And um, yeah, okay, guys. Um, again, I pray, I think I said this already, but I pray your days. Um, blessed, creative, and lovely. Be safe. Be safe. Um, I pray that you're all well. And I love you guys. I'll be talking to you soon. Keep serving Jesus. He loves you. He's right there with you. Okay, friends. Bye-bye.